Hi, and welcome to the Lockdown Lookup. On any normal day, there's a lot to be impatient about. Slow internet, crazy people in the traffic, a demanding boss, unmet expectations. And impatience spews out of our mouths with words like, hurry up, slow down, speak up, not now. How many times have I told you not to? When are you going to do what I've asked? But these are not normal days, are they? So how much more is there to be impatient about in this season of lockdown? We're like prisoners in our own homes. And prisoners can be a rather rowdy bunch. Today my neighbors in the house behind us were having a massive screaming match that had their whole family screaming at each other out in their back garden for all to hear. And I think what makes impatience so easy for us to slip into is the level of uncertainty, the lack of control, the lack of routine, the fact that we're in each other's space all the time. But one of the fruits of the Spirit is patience. And we've been studying in Galatians chapter 5 and verses 22 and 23 about the fruit of the Spirit. And some Bible versions translate patience as forbearance or long-suffering. In fact, the Greek word in Galatians 5.22 for patience comes from the Hebrew word for long-suffering, which is long-nosed. Someone who's patient is long of nose. The word used here in the Greek is macrothumia. Macro means long and thumos, breathing hard. So someone with a short nose has a short fuse, a short temper. They get into a huff very easily. But someone with a long nose is patient because it takes longer to breathe hard and for the angry air to push through their nose. So being patient is being long-nosed. And the opposite of patience is impatience. It's a strong sense of annoyance. It's usually our response to the unintentional actions of others. They annoy us. They push our buttons. They step on our toes. Perhaps they haven't done what we've asked in the way that we wanted them to do it, or they're not performing something on our timetable. They're making us late. They're taking too long in the queue in front of us, or they're taking too long in the bathroom. And it affects husbands and wives and parents and kids and employers and employees. There's technology that can go wrong. There's uncertainty. There's our finances and fears and lack of control. The list of things that can cause impatience in this season is endless. And Ephesians 4, 2 says, be patient, bearing with one another in love. In other words, cut each other some slack. 1 Corinthians 13, 4, Paul says, love is patient. And the fruit of the Spirit flows from love. Colossians 3, 12 to 14, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you, and over all these virtues put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Now, irritability takes impatience even further. Irritability is impatience on steroids. It's the frequency of our impatience is what our irritability is. And most of us are impatient at times, but an irritable person is impatient most of the time, even at small little things. An irritable person may not even realize that they're grumbling against God. You see, my irritability and my impatience is evidence that I want to be God and that I'm frustrated that I'm not God because we hate waiting. But waiting is the only way that patience is developed. You can't just pray for patience. Patience is developed through waiting. There's no shortcut. And this, I believe, is the season to experience the fruit of the Spirit. Impatience is evidence that you and I have created hoops that other people must jump through in order to make us happy. And if we're honest, we might not verbalize it, but we may even be grumbling under our breath. God, you better jump through my hoops too. Oh, how patient the Spirit of God has been with me and with you, despite our impatience. And it's when I reflect on God's patience towards me that I'm led to repentance and I pray again, Holy Spirit, fill me with the fruit of the Spirit, with patience. You know, I remember after 9-11, reading the many stories of impatient people who were late in getting to work in the Twin Towers. One lost their keys, another spilt the milk. One was delayed in the traffic, another missed their train, another had trouble getting their child ready for school. But how different their impatient outbursts looked in the light of the tragic events of 9-11. Those disruptions and interruptions that were beyond their control that had come into their lives that morning had actually saved their lives. And how foolish to think that we are sovereign and all-knowing. And we believe that these very disruptions now that we are going through will save lives. 
and patience lays down its schedule and trusts God and waits expectantly to see what God will do. Lamentations 3.25, the Lord is good to those whose hope is in Him, to the one who seeks Him. It is good to wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. Psalm 5 verse 3, in the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I lay my requests before you and wait in expectation. What's God going to do? Are you ready to be amazed at what God's going to do in you and through you in the season and even after the season? So leave control to God. Leave the timing to God. And in the meantime, while we wait, let's leave the vengeance to God. Peter writes in 1 Peter 4, 8, Above all, love each other deeply because love covers over a multitude of sins. Proverbs 19, 11, A man's wisdom gives him patience. It is his glory to overlook an offense. And so while I wait, I'll worship. While I wait, I'll serve. While I wait, I'll ask God to fill me with his spirit, to make me Christ-like. And the Lord knows, he knows that it's the little things, those continual irritations, the ongoing attacks that have the power to drive us away from his provision in Christ. It's the small things, those little buzzing mosquitoes that can eventually drive us mad and become a stronghold for sin in our lives. And so we need a fresh experience of the Spirit. A yesterday experience is not enough. The Holy Spirit wants to make Christ real to you amidst all that is going on. So repent and invite the good shepherd to anoint your head with oil and to give you the fruit, the beautiful fruit of patience. Let's pray together. Oh, Holy Spirit, we ask that you would give us patience, a Christ-like patience. Lord, remind us of the patience that you have showed us in the gospel, your grace to us, and may it lead us to repentance, may it lead us to treat others and forgive them with the same forgiveness we have received. We ask you to do a new work and may we wait in ex expectation as to what you will do through us in the season. Because we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you so much for being with us. I encourage you to check out the kids' resources. And Sine has put some great kids' activities together to teach you a little bit more about patience. And I uh, wish you a wonderful day. God bless.